Bazaar is intended for mature, open-minded audiences only. If you are easily offended, we suggest you turn this wacky shit straight off. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about John Mark and uh, Christopher went to see Muse last night. Yeah. First of all, I did not. Uh, did I miss? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that Evanescence was I, opening. I'm sure you would have mentioned you that. the three bands that were coming and said, "Are you sure, man? I know how you fucking feel about <laughs> can't hold back." <laughs> I don't like that song. I really only like <laughs> one <laughs> album of Evanescence. Uh, no. You, you know what's door. funny is I think I've criticized you for this before. I think that second album you like is great, but there's literally that. That's the only song that has that style of like rappy stuff on it on that first album yeah it's so yeah, good yeah yeah I, can't well, sort of, I, can't I, I haven't i haven't gone out of my way to not listen to it i just yeah. for whatever reason i heard a couple songs off of the the open door i think is the name of the, the album that i yeah. like and i was like huh so i'm in a, a weird mood i'm gonna i'm gonna oh, pick man, this up should... and try it he sounds yeah, exactly like... the same man yeah exactly yeah. the same yeah you sent me a video i was kind of blown away she sounds great yeah and uh what else? So yeah, I I was working for the my my work. I we have to host a we have a suite at the stadium. So all the concerts that come through, we send the high rollers and the one employee to like manage them, make sure they don't fucking just riot or anything. Right. You know, just to be kind and whatnot. So, but they uh, gave they threw me a couple of extra tickets that they had, and so uh, yeah, John Mark came and brought Maddie, and that was fucking awesome. I haven't yeah. seen her in forever. Yeah, I haven't either. Jeez. She's all grown up now. How old is she now, John Mark? Uh, she'll be she'll be twenty three this year. Oh fuck off! Now I feel. I think three. I, I think me and Christina like <laughs> slept in her room when she was like out of town. You guys offered up her room to us to sleep in. Yeah. She was like fucking ten. I remember this yeah. horse, like toy horses that, everywhere. That feels yeah. about right. Good lord, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Well, how was Mew sounding? Fucking amazing, dude. Yeah. I've seen them four times, and I was kind of blasé about it when I got there. I was like, ah, it's Muse, it's Muse. Mm -hmm. I know they're going to put on a great show, but this was, um, it was like a Super Bowl performance for two hours. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. They had so many epic. set pieces and stuff. Some of those set pieces were, were fucking gigantic, and they weren't just like, you know, inflatables either. Like, because he was like literally sitting on one and doing like this weird slide guitar solo at one point. And it's like, how the fuck... I know that some of them are like behind this wall of lights that they could put down, but there was like two of them that were like huge. And it's like, how the fuck do they do that? Like within like 45 seconds, you know, it's crazy. They have fire, they have streamers. I mean, like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Full nine yards. It looked like a good time. I was sad I couldn't make it. I'd have way too yeah. much going on, and none of those things are money. So <laughs> it yeah. just could not have worked out, but it was fun to imagine for a couple of days when you reached out to me. One of these times, I yeah. get over there. Enjoy some time. God knows I fucking need it. Um, did I tell the story on the podcast about my conversation with Durga McBroom, who sang with Pink Floyd for 20-some uh, years involving the the pig? I don't recall, no. I think I, you've mentioned that you were you had some stories to tell, but I don't think you actually have yet. Well, she... I asked her uh, because, you know, Pink Floyd is sort of like the ultimate and one of the earlier bands to really put on like a a ridiculous stage show with props and crazy lasers and crazy lights. And they weren't the first, but they, they really took it to a whole new tier. <laughs> uh, and one of the things that they did was they float, floated this giant pig around. You know, that's in reference to the uh, album Animals, the giant floating pig. Uh, and they had these fog cannons, like these giant fog cannons that had to be liquid-cooled. And the pig it was a giant fucking pig. You know, this thing had to look at least semi-impressive to 30,000 people. So it was a good size inflatable pig. And the pig gets inflated in its own... It's basically like this own its own pen. And so uh, as the pig was getting inflated, they didn't really know at the time, but one of these liquid... Or one of these fog cannons was leaking the coolant from the liquid cooler. And it was dripping into the pig and it was just sort of slowly filling up so when they they were getting ready to have to launch that thing it was like there's no way it was going to float with water in it so they needed to cut one of the lower hanging extremities uh to relieve the water if you will and that was in fact the pig's dick so so they sent this thing Ooh. just in time over uh, uh the audience as it was pissing all over the first uh, several rows I thought that's a pretty good spinal tap moment for uh, for Pink Floyd. <laughs> you 
Are you pissing? Can you imagine being pissed on? And you would probably mm. just think that's part of the. I would think. Well, if, be... if our if our Kelly was the opener, I'd be <laughs> yeah. more. Oh, R. Kelly. I wonder how prison's treating him. He I imagine not well, but you'd be surprised. <laughs> I guess celebrities often get special treatment even in their... I novel. bet. Yeah, I bet, yeah. Mm -hmm. And money is... You know, people who have money can ac can still access that money to some degree. They can have their people access that money, and it can find its way into a security guard or someone who's getting out. And <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there's all sorts of reasons that a lot of people would want to cozy up to and or protect one R. Kelly... Unfortunately, he probably is not having too terrible of a stay. Any old who, um, well, it's been a while, so uh, I thought we were just going to get caught up. This keeps happening. We just get, uh, time gets away. But I do have uh, a couple things I wanted to mention. One of them is in John Mark's neck of the woods. Have you seen this story about the <laughs> Tacoma woman with tuberculosis that's just straight up refusing treatment and going about her business? Oh yeah, Getting absolutely. People. Typhoid Mary, she's chilling out again. What's <laughs> that, going on? That's what they're. Yeah, she what they're she calling hopped her. a bus and went to the casino. Yeah, she's just out, completely living her life, and uh, getting everybody sick <laughs> with tuberculosis. Which, you know, we this is one of the many things that we have essentially all but uh, eradicated off of the face of the earth, with uh, the exception of a few holdouts concerning a vaccine or uh, treatment, if you will. And I guess this is one I, such, and she's out there it's, just uh, getting people tuberculosis. Go ahead, Lyle. I think it's fascinating because a lot of those uh, <clears throat> hospitals that used to uh, take care of people with TB, mm -hmm. um, they're like the, the haunted ones, the ones that all the ghost hunters are going through mm -hmm. and like uh, just, you know, researching ghosts because there's so many people that died oh my god with TV so many. that it was just fucking insane they used to sit there and put them out on like uh these decks these sun decks and mm -hmm. they thought these I mean, these are doctors thinking that um well the fresh air will help them get the crap out of their lungs yeah they're fine you know <laughs> and they're dead the next week you know it's just like yeah. what yeah, but vitamin really D fresh air probably was um, fine, but that couldn't be the only treatment. <laughs> well, it, it was the main one. Um, they didn't really have a cure for it. No. Um, the uh, it's a real, it's still relevant in dialysis. Um, it's we uh, we as in our dialysis brethren um, are real susceptible to getting TB. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you should be extra pissed at this. Give a little listen. I'm going to read this right off of King Five dot really? com. Uh, Tacoma woman with tuberculosis was found in contempt of court orders Friday. And this is where it gets interesting, uh, you know, legally, as she continues to refuse to isolate and get treatment. There was a time when people were forced to isolate. You know, the idea of having to quarantine by law or, or some sort of measure of the law is certainly nothing new. Everyone acted like it was. But there, I remember a story back in the 90s. Art Bell had this guy on. He got tuberculosis while he was traveling across the country, and I don't remember what state it was, but they, they actually put him in jail because it was the only quote-unquote quarantine facility they had at the ready. So he had to spend even a few nights in jail before they could move him on. Um, but this goes on to say, a judge ordered for her involuntary, involuntary detention, testing, and treatment. A civil arrest warrant issued in March remains in effect. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, let me skip ahead. We have worked with family and community members for more than a year to do everything we can to persuade this woman to take her medication to protect herself and our community. A statement from the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department released in March read, uh, reads, According to court documents, an officer with Pierce County Corrections Bureau surveilled the woman's home in March. The officer saw the woman leave on a city bus, which dropped her off at a casino. <laughs> Since then, the woman appeared not to be home. Additionally, her family members were unresponsive. It's believed that the woman is actively ho holding or actively avoiding execution of the warrant and going about her biz. Um, I think you had it right with act actively hoed. Act <laughs> she's actively hoed. Actively hoeing around TB. I wonder how many people she's going to get sick. And this is John Mark's town. You gotta, you gotta wonder, John Mark. I don't know if you take the bus ever, but uh, I know you go to public places. At any uh, given time, you could be right next to someone with active 
untreated uh, tuberculosis. I don't like the sound of that. I guess that's true of any of us, but this, we know there's one out there. Yeah, good times. Purposefully defying. Uh, you know, good times. And yeah, on the bright times. side, you'll probably hear it coming. <laughs> yeah, it should be the probably, one hacking up blood. Advanced. You know, good. Uh, day. My question is, if she's like had this for like a year, how she's not dead yet? Like, I mean, if she's obviously not getting treated, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. what the hell? Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know the uh, the path of <laughs> one with TB, but it is a good question. My mom is still going down the rabbit hole of QAnon, only deeper and deeper. And I sent you guys a screenshot of <laughs> this exchange of messages. My mom sent me a photo. The, my mom is convinced that a lot of these people in quote-unquote power or uh, even celebrities are dead. And they've all been replaced with body doubles or clones. And she thinks Joe Biden is one of them. A lot of the, All of these people think Joe Biden died and the one that we know and love today is a clone and or stand-in and she she sent me this photo that's been making its rounds on true social you know the the right wing and it's really become a conspiracy theory ridden uh bit of social mead she sent me this photo where it's like up oh, joe biden got busted the here's the proof uh because joe biden was right-handed and here he is signing something with his left hand and what would be the first, if somebody sends you a photo saying somebody's writing with the wrong hand, what would be the first bit of investigation you would do <laughs> yeah. just by looking at it? First mm -hmm. of all, you might notice that this is in the, the Oval Office. He was, this was a photo op. He was obviously signing something important. The Oval Office is essentially set up as one big photo op. It's a working office, but it's really a showbiz office, too. It's a studio. Uh, we don't see the other end of the the studio, but any anytime you see something happening in the Oval Office, I, can't, I feel like I'm not saying that right every time. Oval Office, uh, you can see the film lights and the camera lights, and then you know reflecting in the window. But I have seen, and as have had, all of us over our lives have seen the Oval Office at least one thousand times. Even if we're not paying attention, it jumped out at me immediately that. The American flag, if you're looking at the president sitting at the desk, the American flag is to our left, and the federal flag, or whatever the other flag is, is to the right, you know, and there's a window in between. And the president's, and the desk is in between. <laughs> Upon three seconds of investigative work, I spotted with my investigative eye that the flag was on the wrong side. And I'm like, oh, and if you really zoom in, you can actually see that the insignia on the other federal flag was backwards and I'm like hey. like okay mom <laughs> I promise you guys my mom is not stupid but holy shit is she gullible but it's like okay my mom's a boomer and she's she's got this such a uh, an innocent sort of mind she doesn't go to that well why would they you know why would anyone fake this she just doesn't have that Whatever that is, <laughs> skepticism, um, <laughs> you know, hesitation, or just cynicism. I don't know what it, whatever it is, she doesn't have that. And so she just takes so many things at face value. And so I asked her, I was like, well, the, you know, and then I sent her a bunch of photos of the Oval Office showing. And then I actually found within you know, 30 seconds the, the actual photo that had been flipped. And you can see, yeah, there he is signing. It's the exact photo, and someone literally just... Flew. This isn't even Photoshop work. This is... You know... <laughs> a five-year-old could do this, could figure out how to do this on your phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you sent us that, and uh, I, I have to admit something. I have to confess something. Mm -hmm. You sent us that, and I love your fucking mom, dude. Like, yeah. She gave me one of my very best friends on this planet. You know, sweet woman. <laughs> yes. But the first thing that went through my mind was... Fuck, I let that woman watch my kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, trust me, it, your child was very safe with, with her. Know. Until, well, until he gets old so enough for her to yeah. share these theories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although yeah, maybe he already was... is. He knows chemtrails now. Oh, my God. Which she believes in now. Um, I still kind of believe in chemtrails, too. But anyway, she's going to stumble on her old episodes. She's like, <laughs> I found this great podcast about... Well, that's what's... Yeah, <laughs> but, but they're so filthy, but man, they are really on point. 
Um, <laughs> that one, that host got sexy voice too. <laughs> Something Back familiar. To future shit happening. The way the wind just. I can't believe Bigfoot and DB Cooper had it out. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's really heartbreaking and infuriating. And but so then it's like it's bad enough that my mom was falling for this shit, but then. I went back and looked at the original link that she sent me, and that thing had, had like 15,000 shares and counting on uh, True so- Social. And I'm sure it was being shared on Facebook. And it's like, how? And I scrolled through. I didn't spend a ton of time on this, but I scrolled through, and they're all comments of being like, aha, busted. Nobody. I saw nobody saying, is it possible <laughs> that perhaps somebody, some Einstein wizard of photomechanical skills, found a way to manipulate this photograph <laughs> and make it look like he was writing with the wrong hand? Uh, no one. Nobody. And this That's is- why I really like these new things on Twitter and Facebook where it's like, this information contains something that's fraudulent or like invalid yeah. or, you know, it's not factual. And yeah. here's the link to why. <laughs> Have yeah. you seen that? Yeah. I love that stuff. It's great. Ugh. And it's unfortunately it's necessary. And a, a lot of people moan and groan about it. It's like, look, you motherfuckers are making this necessary. This is not like the old days of conspiracy theory stuff or even like UFOs or, you know, if someone fakes a UFO, it's like, who fucking cares? If someone fakes a story about medicine and science during a pandemic that's a bit more important and if a million people reshare it and swallow it i I think we can all agree that uh, we have entered a new era of dangerous lies and dangerous misinformation but this one really blew me away i mean this it it felt like a setup (laughs) you know and i always felt like this with so many of the things that were coming out of during the covid stuff like some of these theories is like some of this feels like it just has to be trolling like this can't all be true right and the flat earth stuff i still feel like that probably started as a bit of a troll that got out of hand and then people like you know what that's starting to make some sense i mean tiktok before my sweet dear gullible mother is now (laughs) swallowing flat earth but holy snikes i'll keep you posted on where that goes it's depressing for the ronster but it does help to share it. I don't like to make fun of my mom, and I, I don't feel like I am really making fun of my mom. I'm definitely making fun of this movement. I but and I And I was so funny. grateful for her to watch Logan that night, to be honest. I was making a joke. <laughs> mm. No, I, I understand. I, what night? When did... Uh, was that when you went to one of the oh, shows? This, the was like, shows? this was like two years ago, when he was like maybe two or less than that. Maybe you know, We came out for WenCon, and oh, we did the right. panel. That's right. And then... Uh, there was some party at night. Was it the screening of uh, Dude Bro? It was either Dude Bro or it might have been our live podcast from Radar Station. That would have been more yeah. than two years ago, though. Well, yeah, actually, that. I can't remember. Yeah. Tw- wow. WenCon did not happen um, until after. It had to it, have been. The li- it was the live broadcast because I remember I came out without the kid and watched Dude Bro. I think so. Fuck, now I can't. It's all blending yeah, together. It would be I'm one of the show a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I was just thinking about WenCon. Get it? It's that time of year, you know, and all the yeah. Facebook reminders well, are popping up. It's like, man, I missed speaking that. Speaking about season. WenCon and, and speaking about your mom, I, I didn't really want to rub it in, but <laughs> I'm kind of eating a, a little poor man version of a blizzard called a McFlurry. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I couldn't really get a blizzard offhand, so, but I did get me a McFlurry. A McFlurry. And I don't know that I ever had a McFlurry. Oreo crust in there. It's got to be a pretty good facsimile. Dairy Queen had bad. very specific. I think their blizzards were so good because that ice cream was so crazy thick. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I feel like McDonald's might be a little softer, but I also like a little soft ice cream. I like my ice cream a, a little, little on the melted side. Mm-hmm. I do miss blizzards. I have not found. I have found some really good ice cream that I can eat that's non dairy. It's cashew based. Um, that hits a lot of the notes, but nothing quite i guess i could probably try to make my own blizzard out of there <laughs> find some yeah dairy free m&ms or something and puree it up with them uh, ice cream I got, shit but i got faith in you brother yeah i, I appreciate you, that i faith. know you can do it mhm um i don't really have anything else to talk about thought you um, i'd open it up for you guys and if you didn't have anything i have a little game prepared it's been a while since we did some elimination um, I got a good one I think that might be kind of interesting. Might be a little challenging. I feel like the last few we've done, you guys have gotten so many answers. Um, this one might be a bit more challenging. Maybe not. It's still in the same world that we, we usually uh, <laughs> keep these in. But uh, we might have time for that because we do have someone joining us for weird 
triv at some point, mm-hmm. but uh, I'll open up the floor. Anything and everything. It's just uh, a little bit of shooting shit. I got to what you're watching. I may have started uh, talking about this before, but mm-hmm. I just finished up uh, Shama Lama Ding Dong's Servant <laughs> on Apple TV. Didn't we decide that was kind of racist? <laughs> did we? <laughs> I think I did, but uh, it was only after I said it for 3,000 times. I, uh, M. Shama Lama Ding Dong is who uh, Christopher is referring to, if anyone doesn't know. <laughs> well, I mean, we're kind of, we're, we, we are making his <laughs> fun of his... Very <laughs> ethnic name. Um, oh, I guess you're right. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Living that was the old me. I'm a, I'm a better person. As, <laughs> That's right. That was, it's it's all that was about, Chris of 30 it's, seconds It's all ago. about intent, and none of yeah. us intended it to be that yeah. way, but we do recognize that it yes. can be problematic. So no, we, when we, it, when we'll it occurred to me, it was... dispense yes. of that. I'm just going to get one more out of my system. Shamalama ding dong. Yeah, it felt good for me to say it. I got to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, when... Because uh, it's more like just a, he's a ding dong. Yeah, but I guess uh, I mean, wouldn't we say kid, it if he was know. right in the room? I don't think we would, but <laughs> but wouldn't we? <laughs> well, like, what was the story? It was Ice T that you, Mister T? <laughs> yeah, it was like called? seventeen. Give me a break. But yeah, he was filming a what is it? Surviving the game Surviving the here game. in Wenatchee, and uh, we we ran him ran into him and his posse at Denny's, and my friend Jason got up and went to the table, and. Uh, he said, I'm going to go get him, give me an autograph. I'm like, I'm going to fucking bug him. He's eating. He was sitting on the opposite side of Denny's, and we were over by the bathrooms. And Jason gets up and goes, and here comes Ice-T with him. We're like, holy shit. And uh, he signs everyone's napkins, except for mine, because <laughs> as I was standing there, I was like, well, should I call you Ice or Mr. T? And he's like halfway through signing someone else's napkin. He just glares, just glares at me. <laughs> Wipes his ass with it and the back to you. I don't remember if he had a response except, uh, and I don't remember if the glare was sort of like, he, he, he. I just know I didn't get an autograph. Uh, and then he headed into the bathroom. <laughs> so I guess that probably you, answers you, that. You've clearly let go. <laughs> well, if I ever uh, run I into to, Ice-T again, I've got that, a story. That was that was pretty sick. That was a pretty sick, not necessarily burn, but th- th- that's yeah. pretty good. Should I, I call you Ice or Mr. T? <laughs> that was a fair question, if not a decent <laughs> icebreaker, no pun intended. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, well, um, uh, the M. Shyamalan. I, I would recommend the show. It's four seasons, uh, about 10 episodes a pop, and some. it's a very well done show. They do wrap it up uh, with some, they leave a little bit open, but... Don't say too much because we were watching that show. We haven't. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Second season. I'm not going to get back to it. I'm. I'm. I'm purposefully avoiding any real story because it's the story that is shifting all eternally. Yeah. It was really well done though, and uh, I I enjoyed the shit out of it. I watched it feverishly. Like, what is happening? Remind me the name of family's crazy. Called servant. 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 Okay. Uh Oh. Oh. You know what blew my mind? Okay, so I just this Apple TV so, man. I guess I'm gonna have to sign up at some point. Oh, you just at least get the free month or whatever free trial they have. Like, there's tons of good shit on there. But, yeah, but um, that's what everyone says, and then I only have like, I mean, for me, that's about a good week's worth of burning through it, and then I got to go through all the other shows that I haven't uh, watched. But yeah, I hear you. So, like, I started watching, we started watching Servant, I don't know, but I think when it first came out on whenever that was, a couple of years ago now, at least, probably, a couple of few years, um, and I didn't, I didn't realize, because I hadn't really watched Six Feet Under, um, you guys watched Six Feet Under? No. Oh my is god, that, is that the same girl? Yes, it's so, no. Six Feet wow. Under was the HBO show from, like, what, the late, late 90s, early 2000s, early 2000s. Mm. That shocks me. Is that and, with Dexter, the guy from Dexter? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, it's about yeah, a I'm family of uh, funeral directors, and the daughter in that show is the wife in Servant. And I, I watched Servant first, and then we started watching Six Feet Under. I was like, wait, holy shit, is she the is she the wife in Servant? And you know, like, it's actually got Ron Weasley in it too, as a kind of right. grown up. That's that's right. And he's I, phenomenal. I, like I could, I was like, oh, this is gonna suck. He he's got like an American accent. No, he's great. kind of a, a slimy character. But I was yeah, like, this is never gonna wrong. fly. And it it one hundred percent did. Hmm. Yeah, he's totally great in that show. Boom. Yeah, it totally blew my mind. I was like, wow, this is the same. This is the same woman. But it was just weird, like watching her as like a fully grown person, and then like going back to watching her as a teenager. Basically, you know, it's like, what the hell? It's crazy. 
well, you guys are going to mock me, but what I have been watching more than anything of late, or having on the background, of course, the original Scooby-Doo episodes. I <laughs> discovered that they were on Tubi for free. Um, good quality. They've been, you know, you've been able to find them for a while, but it seems like these are a bit higher quality. And Man, if you haven't watched the original 1960s Scooby-Doo uh, in a long time, I know Halloween's a ways away, but it just, the colors, the watercolor backgrounds, the art of that show, and the music, everything about it is fucking perfect. It's been, uh, it's been making the roster happy, having some Scooby-Dooby-Doo. On Tubi, Scooby Doo Doo. has been forever ruined for me. Mm -hmm. um, for the movies, along along with Fraggle Rock, uh, no, it was <laughs> so back in like uh, 91, 92, something like that. Uh, there was a bunch of us lived in a house um, in Seattle, um, and a, a, a a, my roommate had a girlfriend at the time who, like, her whole gig was, like, Scooby-Doo and Fraggle Rock and getting stoned and watching those two shows. And it was just, like, you kind of had to be there, but it was just, like, by the time all was said and done, like, I could never watch Scooby-Doo or Fraggle Rock again. I hear you. And <laughs> it was just, like, it, it was, like, poisoned. You know well, what I mean? Well, it's funny you say that, because another thing I have been watching, kind of for the first time, are uh, some of the Star Trek Next Generation episodes. You know, the uh, Oh, man, the I've been meaning to go through and watch those. They're pretty, it, they're hold pretty up, fun. Are, are I they think, enjoyable? I think it's a slow burn, um, and other people Season have... one of the Next Generation is like, then it gets better. Yeah, I, I, that's what I've heard, and how could it not be? You know, it would have to find its way, but I, they're like, little one-off episodes that's what i always liked about star trek is that you, it, we have enough things that are like serial and that it goes on and on and on and on it's like what's gonna happen next week but i i like stuff that's more episodic um i'm in that mood lately especially being too busy to really get into binging with much attention but i i've been enjoying it but the reason that it, it has taken me what 30 fucking years to really give it a try well first of all we didn't have the internet to really do this until well, the last 10 years or so if you really wanted to but i the aforementioned jason i used to hang out at his trailer down at uh, 404 south kentucky and there was no cable there was just whatever you could get and we would get like two and a half channels and one of those was the local fox and all they ever played all day long was like terrible daytime shows like um, people's court type stuff and uh, jerry springer that was the good shit you know <laughs> like if it was during the day and then they would just play reruns of star trek the next generation and jason and his girlfriend would just watch that shit all day long and over and over and over again and i never knew enough about it to get into it and it burned me out on it even before i ever gave it a shot burned you yeah but i've been enjoying it and and it's wild to go back and see patrick stewart <laughs> being like younger than me um still bald as fuck but he has to be younger than me when like his face is so pristine and everyone looks so young it's like god damn and it's interesting because you know there's the picard uh series that's going on right now too and i so I, I see previews of that in, while I'm watching the old one. <laughs> it's like hopping back to the future. It's like no one could foresee that this franchise would still be going and there'd be like 100 spinoffs and the internet would be a thing and we would still not have spaceships. Um, very, yeah. very strange. Yeah, but, but... still haven't gone back to the fucking moon. <laughs> yeah, we're getting closer. Uh, there was supposed year. to be another... Uh, year, right? Did, did they do... Actually, they're not actually going to land, are they? They're just going to... Go around I th it. I think right. Chris. I think you're right. I think the first it will be manned uh, or human. Womp fucking womp. Like, come on. Well, like, nut up. Like, this is dangerous shit. Cooler. Like, <laughs> put a put a trailer on there so people you, can fucking go fuck on the moon. Okay? You like, gotta, I don't know something. You got to remember one of the last <laughs> space shuttle flights. People blew up. <laughs> you know that happened <laughs> twice. Yeah. It's dangerous shit. And Yo, I, I would <laughs> apparently. Um, I would rather wait a few more years. Yomo. I know we're all... You only moon once. Yeah. yeah. Yomo. You only moon once. Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's how you know, the motto. We only moon once. And then we're done. Uh, I the, find uh, you can moon over and, and over and Yomo. over again. Mm -hmm. The discovery was a weird fucking day. That was a weird, weird thing, man. I remember it was, uh, our teachers, because back in the day, or, uh, teachers would Columbia. bring in VC VCRs and TVs and stuff like that. And they had the shuttle going live. Mm -hmm. And the whole class is watching it. 
and we're all excited for it. We're like, oh my god, this is gonna be awesome. You know, watch it go, and it's fucking it horrible. Countdown, three, two, one, and you watch the fucker go off, and then it's like, oh man, this is go- this thing's hauling ass. And then all of a sudden, kabow, you know, and it's like, yeah. oh shit. Yeah. I mean, it was, we it was we all got sent home early that day. I see. I don't remember if I saw that happening live in school or if I just feel like I've seen, like I've seen that happening in movies and I know other people. No, I, you I did. Can't, I can't remember. We did it at uh, Lee School anyway. We, yeah. Well, I would have been we at that. We probably didn't get <laughs> good, good yeah, enough I, reception. I feel like I remember that happening too, but then I also feel like I remember hearing about that so much that I maybe imagine that memory yeah, i think I it's couldn't like possibly have a clear you know, memory yeah but the the one i was talking about was columbia that was many many years later i was watching that on nasa tv and that that was when i was living in this house that's how recent that was and then they retired the the space shuttle program not long after that but and then nothing like nothing and nothing and that nothing. was the one that burned so up on re-entry years. right yeah um it was pretty awful and you you heard the communication, and then all of a sudden, no communication, and then static, and everything on the map, like the you know on the control room, just looked like disaster. And then you saw like people, you know, every, it, we didn't have a hundred cameras everywhere and super high def zoom up on people's faces like we do now in NASA TV. But back then, you just kind of see the whole room and the control room. And you could just see people like standing up and they, like with their hands on their head, like Ugh, something something ain't right. And then over the next two hours, they f- they figured out that it burnt up. Um, and then they started researching the footage of the launch, and I think they spotted a piece of the heat shield breaking off during the launch. Yeah, it was like a yeah, I remember tiles that. or something like it that. It could be right? something like, that they were yeah, aware of at the time, but it's like, what do you do? You can't fix that. Um, so you just come back in and, and cross your fingers. I don't remember if that was a discovery they made after the fact or not. Um, so I understand. I, I'm i excited. Um, I think they just did another test flight, or maybe that one got canceled. But, yeah, I would rather be. <laughs> as much as I'd love to go full-on YOMO, uh, I think no we should probably <laughs> slow our YOMO. And uh, not die, no mo. You know what I'm saying? Well, that was a bit of well. Our technology is so awesome right now. You know, now versus back then. It's there. It would be. I, I think it would be a quick little fucking shot in the dark. Bada, bada bing, bada boom. You know, kind of thing. And on the way yeah, home. But see, that's what when I'm get curious cocky. about is if they lo- if they could make that the moon ring like a bell again. Boom. <laughs> yeah, which that, that, that was that from the mission that. or the the Apollo missions, right? One of the yeah. astronauts said that. Yeah. I don't know. They, what, what did they do? They lost the food fuselage on the way at home, the fuel, the extra container. <laughs> and as it hit, as it landed on the Come moon, on. it made a gong sound, like a hollow yeah. bell sound. Yeah. A lot of intrigue uh, around the moon. Going back to ruining things, I'm curious if you guys have anything. I feel like we all have something that we used to love, but somebody ruined it for us um, for a long time. I could not listen to Led Zeppelin because one of my first real girlfriends, and I ended up moving in with her for a couple of years. I fucking loved Led Zeppelin, and I bought her for her birthday the big um, Led Zeppelin box set. You remember that with all the crop circles on the cover? <laughs> that was like <laughs> state of the art shit, and it had all this book, uh, these books that came with it. It was a cool set. I got her that for her birthday, and she proceeded to play nothing else for the next two fucking years. I got so burnt out on Led Zeppelin. I can't believe that I, to this day, I, I am shocked when I actually reach for my Led Zeppelin albums. Uh, but I go through phases every now and again, every few years. I got to go through them all in order. So I'm glad it didn't ruin me for life. But you guys got anything that any that you loved specifically that someone uh, ruined you on? Or I'm ruined by association. I know it's happened, but I can't think of it at this moment. Yeah, I know there are things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, aside from Scooby Doo and Fraggle Rock, I can't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you couldn't have been super balls deep into Fraggle Rock to begin with, were you? No, no. It was just like it's just like I never want to hear about this or see anything associated with this again. 
I, w- was um, it was it the classic Scooby Doo? By then there would have been. I mean, by the '90s there were so many spinoffs. You probably yeah, it was, had it, a it, was, it, was all, it was literally all of it, dude. Like like really, and maybe yeah, worse. videotapes and DVDs and yeah, it was just like I it, love the old it, ones. It, incessant. Oh my god, the old ones are fucking <laughs> great, man. I'm telling you, get on Tubi and watch some Scooby. Uh, well, what I was on, watching, they're on um, HBO too. Oh, I I'm found them at uh, Chris. Uh, the their HBO channel, they got just a shit ton of Scooby Doo, and I got all high one time and watched them all. <laughs> it's I was, perfect. <laughs> I just fucking... let it play. I didn't care. Yeah, no, it's great. That's what I'm doing. I mostly had it on in the background while I was working. Um, I'm glad you um, brought up HBO though. Before we move on, real quick, did you guys see that HBO is becoming? You know, now it's HBO Max after being like seven other different um, changing the changes. Edit, isn't it? Yeah, they're changing it now to just Max. Because a, they've already started integrating other networks. Let's drop the most name brand thing That's that what we everyone have. Everyone is fucking Probably. saying. But here's I'm trying to find. I saw this on another or heard it on another podcast, so I was hoping it would pop up with the a, a search. And I'm not seeing anything. But one of the reasons that they're given for this is they they actually felt like some people are afraid to go to HBO because they find it too highbrow. I'm like, get the fuck out of here! You like, like, Game of Thrones that was a quality like a show, but was me. that highbrow? Like, you had, uh, I mean, <laughs> that was as, I don't know, like, rabid fan pop culture as you could get. Uh, I, it's quality stuff. That doesn't mean it's highbrow. But so apparently, I can't, they're merging with Warner Brothers. And I think it's going to cause the app to bump up to twenty bucks a month instead of oh, what five or seven or whatever it is now. No, it's like fifteen or sixteen now. Is it now? Yeah, I've got to pay attention. I think that might be one. I'm still on uh, one of my ex's accounts. <laughs> I lose track of which which ones I'm paying for, and some of my exes are on, and <laughs> some of my friends are on. I'm surprised they haven't cracked down on that more. But anyway, I was wondering if you guys saw that and might have had some more details. But it sounds like it's going to be kind of wonky. But it's also getting rid of a shit ton of content that won't be available anywhere because they're not interested in it. Uh, Go ahead, Jim. Isn't Cinemax still a thing? Well, see, I thought that Cinemax and HBO at one point were a dual ticket. Like Mm. when I first got uh, Satellite, it was C-Band Satellite. You know, I had that big... 12 foot dish in my yard that actually moved across the sky. It was kind of awesome. Um, but so I always thought that HBO and Cinemax were at least under some sort of parent company. And I don't know if that's true or not because I could swear there's a separate Cinemax app or subscription you can get, right? You can get Showtime, must Cinemax, be. HBO. Cause yeah. like if it's not, then wouldn't people like think that like Max, that it's Max. Like, that's what I thought when it, when they changed it to HBO Max. I don't yeah. know, dude. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Maybe there is. If there is a Cinemax app, I gotta sign up for them shits because they got all them Skinemax flicks that a young Ronnie who was coming of age used to see. <laughs> and I might have to go <laughs> watch them shits. Go ahead, Lop. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I'm trying to remember the guy's name, Josh something or other. He does a lot of. He's like a, a young Indiana Jones goes around doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's like exploration unknown or something like that. <laughs> it's the show. Hmm. Um, I don't know. That. I watch. I've been watching that. It's got like ten, ten seasons. So there's just tons of them. Um, but it's kind of cool because he, he just, you know, uh, there's parts of it are about like, um, you know, like uh, mummies in Egypt and stuff like that. And some of them are uh, finding the the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, some of them, one of them, the ones that I the uh, particularly uh, I liked was um, there's a book that came out in the early 80s called The Secret. And each um, in the book, there's like, I don't know, like 12 um, pictures in the book. And then there's like poems. And you have to basically figure out um, where there's a treasure buried, like in a city, right? And each one of them are, are a different city. So you would go and you would try to crack the code with the poem to match up with the, the you know, the painting. Um, and the painting tells you pretty much everything. It's all hidden in it. It's called The Secret. It's a book. You can it's buy it. It's a different secret than and, I was thinking of. Yeah, this one is. Well, the thing is, is they've only found three out of like 12. I mean, there's, and uh, unfortunately, the, the guy that started it all, um, he died. 
naturally. Um, but what what you would do Too was secretive. follow the clues, and you know, say whatever. It would be like a weird clue with us, you know, astronomy or something like that. Uh, and, and you're in a park or whatever, mm-hmm. and then you know you, whatever you you start digging, and what you would find is um, uh, a glass little box, and inside that box is a clay little, and it's all hand done. The guy that created the game uh, made it all by hand, and there's a key inside. And what you would do if you were to win and find this box, open it up, open up the little you know, caricature, uh, you know, container that was holding the key, you would take that key and you would mail it back to him and he would send you a jewel. And each one of the 12 were like, you know, expensive jewels, like uh, the sapphire or an emerald or a ruby. And you would, he would send that to you as a prize. I love that kind of stuff. So out of 12 of those, there's only three that have been found. Yeah. So there's there's still treasure out there to be found. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. If maybe you know this, but uh, just this little paragraph that popped up. Um, the guy that wrote it looks like his last name was Priest. Um, he died in 2005 in a car accident. Now, car yes. accidents happen. Yeah, that's the guy. But what if somebody yeah. got a hold of his uh, treasure map and decided they didn't want any more competition? Didn't want him putting out any more clues? Well, you know what the funny thing is? There's actually a Japanese version of the game, and they kind of copy it. It's almost copyrighted, but it's different, and they have different, I guess, treasure um, boxes, so they can't really get confused with the originals. It's it's That's all down a whole different rabbit hole. Um, but I, I don't know. I get. I think those games are fascinating. Did you ever hear of the Atari game... Treasure, or what is it? Sword Quest. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't. I don't know. God, did it actually get released? I think it did get released. It was. Let me just read this little Wikipedia entry. I never heard of this, but it was really interesting, and it's a lot like this. Sword Quest is a series of video games originally produced by Atari in the '80s as part of a contest consisting of three finished games: Earth World, Fire World, and Water World and a planned fourth game, Airworld. Each of the games came with a comic book that explained the plot as well as containing part of the solution to a major puzzle that had to be solved to win the contest with a series of prizes whose total was uh, total value was $150,000. Pretty steep for the 80s. The series had its genesis as a possible sequ- sequel to Atari's groundbreaking 1979 title adventure <laughs> which <laughs> adventure was literally just a square going through a bunch of mazes or though you had to i think you had to get like keys and locks and uh, it was a bit more complicated than that but i mean this was the 70s and atari oh for sure i don't remember what happened with this um but people started playing uh and i think the ultimate one of the ultimate prizes was you got the holy grail obviously Folks didn't think it was the, the actual cup of the Carpenter Christ, <laughs> but uh, it was this bejeweled Holy Grail thing, if I remember right. But sales kind of tanked about halfway through this thing, so they just gave up. And there's all these disappointed sword questers out there, like, but I would get close. I know it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I yeah. Those shit. those shows are really fun to watch. The well, that's another thing that's pairing with uh, HBO. All the Discovery shows, and that's a parent oh, really? company to all the History Channel stuff. So you may uh, you may be happy about that. You know what I miss? I miss the actual History shows without the horse shit. You know, um, Ancient Aliens was fun for a while. Monster Quest was fun for a minute. Um, but at some point, all the paranormal and all the conspiracy theory stuff uh, and the what-if stuff became all that the History Channel was. And I missed... Those earlier shows were just like mysterious parts of history, and they weren't trying to solve it with a bunch of goobly gawk, <laughs> to a coin a phrase. You know, just good history, well told. Um, I think I talked about this at one point. There was a a show on Netflix. I think it was just called. It couldn't be called Rome because there was a. I think it was HBO or Showtime did a show called Rome. Yeah, HBO show. It was yeah, pretty I good. Watching that actually. Um, 
but there was a, a, a show about Rome. It was a documentary series, and it had full-on gore and tits and sex. And it. it was fucking rad. It's like, I don't know. I've been waiting for... I didn't know I was waiting for this my whole life. Um, I'll try to look that up in a little bit, because uh, I know some of y'all are curious with that. So we'll see. Um, but I got a feeling it'll just be all the the paranormal stuff. But I just miss good fucking history shows. Those were so much fun. They were enough, you know. And it was fun to occasionally have some of the, the kooky shit um, amidst all the other stuff. But yeah. anywho. I, I got s- stuck there for a while when I had my insomnia. And I would watch. Um, another thing I'd watch with I wouldn't be watching. I just have it on in the background. Uh, was Ghost Hunters. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the new version of it, and I can't remember what it's even called. I think it's called Ghost Nation or whatever. Hmm. So they took um, oh, Ghost Nation. Yeah, yeah. They took the one of the guys from Ghost Hunters, and they but they they split up. So what it was Jason Haas or whatever. He started Ghost Nation. Uh, the other guy, um, he started his own, which is cool. It's like whatever. They they they're totally two different kind of shows though. Uh, the other guy did more of a takeoff of Ghost Hunters, you know, like what they were doing before. And um, I think Jason's was a little bit more made up. They had a little bit more CGI in the stories, you know. So like if you're watching it, you know, you'd see more like fake ghosts, you know, and and the other thing about them, they they weren't really going around in the dark. They were just walking around with flashlights. Yeah. You know, you could tell a lot of it was scripted. But uh, I was watching that for a while, too, just to kind of try to get to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I, I just like listening to the stories. I, I could yeah. have my eyes closed That's and listen That's the thing, to the is like the, the, the most interesting parts of those shows were always the history of the building, the stories yeah, yeah. about who was murdered there or what king uh you know oh the first couple ones I'm, I'm not kidding you dude the first couple ones if you just want a really good watch watch the first first episode of, of ghost nation or whatever mm-hmm. it's really good i was like wow this is really fucking good yeah i don't want to spoil it but yeah don't spoil it has it has I to do with witches it. and trees oh, spoilers uh, well, should we get on to at least a few rounds of elimination that I got here? Yeah, that sounds good. Let's do it. Uh, this is Ranker's best classic or cult classic movies of all time. Oh, uh, boy. This could be a bit tricky, um, but here's what Ranker says about it, like specifically what is a cult classic film, but this is what they say. Cult classics are often comedies that originally flew under the radar, but they can be dramas or horror films as well. Now it's time to determine the best cult classic movie ever made. Now, there's not a lot of information there, so I added this. Uh, I would say most of my picks for best or most popular, I guess best. The list is best as voted by the people. Um, Mm. So forget I said popular. This has nothing to do with box office or anything like that. Most of my picks aren't on the top five, but a few, and there are a few that aren't on this list. So I added are they up. from all all years? Yes, all over the map, but I will say that most of these are not terribly old, um, but they're not terribly new either. I just a quick glance, you absolutely know every one of these movies. Whether you will think of them as a cult classic, there are some of these that I don't, but uh the five that came to my head that absolutely should be in the top twenty five. We're gonna do the top top twenty five as voted by Ranker and as a bonus, I added the Ronster list with five of my picks, and each of those will be worth five points. So if you guess oh, that, wow. um, five, you five get, a little, get a little shot of some bonus points there. So yeah. uh, I feel like Lyle oh. rarely starts this game. So we're going to go Lyle, Christopher, and John Mark. John Mark almost always takes it up the ass. Maybe we should change that because you surprisingly don't seem to do very well with these. <laughs> I know. I don't know why. It's just like when I have too many options, it becomes a problem. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, I get Your you. Your brain kind of goes yeah, over. It is over hard. Board. It is hard because you're literally picking from the ether. Everything. And you yeah. just have to think yeah. of a name of something first. And it's like, does that count? Yeah. But Well, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down my pants and I'm going to freak out because I see a freaking leech on my on my bottom side. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, stand by me. Interesting that that is the scene that came to your mind. 
<laughs> well, and um, Stand By Me is not on the list. I would I would accept that as class. a bit of a cult classic, but that's also just kind of a good movie, and I think it did well. Stand By Me, I felt like, was a pretty popular movie at the time. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I fucking loved that movie. For some reason, we had a, a VHS of it, so I watched it over and over and over. Um, so that is our first whiff. And uh, let's see if Christopher can take advantage. Mm. I'm having a hard time. Like uh, my my first the first movie I want to go to. I I'm hoping this is in the right fucking category. But like Rocky Horror Picture Show, absolutely a cult classic. I think it uh, is a little low on the list, but not low by any means. It's at number seven. So uh, mm -hmm. right at the bat, mm -hmm. you get 19. That's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, <clears> I. <throat> I I mean, I think by a lot of people's measures, that is the cold classic movie. Yeah. Uh, although it's definitely mo more known as a midnight movie. You know, that's kind of an experience more than something you just pop in and watch uh, because it's one of your favorite movies. I know people do that, of course, but that's more of an event. Maybe that's why it's lower. But you're there for 19. John Mark, have you managed to pull anything out of the ether yet? Uh, let's see here. Um... I think movies that are just rewatchable over and over and over again, and probably even more fun watching with other people. Definitely more fun well, with other I, people. I think There's our generation... So many, so many options. Um, okay, I got one that could maybe could be considered a cult classic. Mm -hmm. There's, Dude, I, I, have, I have so many movies swirling around my brain right now. Well, that's great. Um, but I'm just going to go with uh, Clue. Oh, good Clue one. is a great guess, and I know it was on the list, but not in the top 25. But that uh, that's another one that I think should be a little higher. Yeah. Good guess, and you're in the right track. Uh, in the right track, he says. Uh, all right, Lyle, let's see if you can get it back in track with your... So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull down my pants, and I'm going to pull out my, my boomstick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Evil Dead. Oh, Evil Dead. Um, Great fucking oh, boy. That was one of the ones I was thinking of, too. Number two. That was a good time Whoa. to whip it out, Lyle. Yeah, uh, was yeah. A good I was time totally to thinking about that. It's like, yep, yeah. 100 fucking percent cult classic movie. <laughs> and uh, for a long time, I don't know, I mean, outside of X-rated movies, I think Deep Throat might be the highest grossing in the film of all time. But for a long time, and maybe even to to this day, Evil Dead was the highest grossing indie film. Yeah. They well, they're coming like out with a new one. I want to see it. It's made yeah. millions and millions. Um, we should all go see that. We saw the the other one. Oh, we did. We yeah. saw the, the I don't first think reboot. Yeah. There, but oh yeah, uh, that's right. We did go see that together. Oh, didn't oh, were, we? were we all there? It was great. It the was new one looks experience. fucking good. It looks. It looks good. Uh, well, that uh, puts Lyle in good standing, even with Christopher's nineteen. Anybody's mm. game still though. Uh, Twenty-four nineteen to zip. But John Mark needs Chris to whiff, mm. and. Uh, Get one on his next round here. My my thought behind saying that this was going to be, I'm going to go with something more modern. I'm like thinking back, how many fucking years has this movie made ago? Like <laughs> yeah, 20 years ago, more it's modern not. Than they are. Uh, I'm going to go with Donnie Darko. I, I assume that's a cult classic. I it, it definitely is. And yeah, I would I consider that. I think that is one that was just outside the top 25. Oh, okay. I'm scanning <laughs> to make sure, because I know I saw it. Um, yeah, no, that's a great guess. That's kind of all that movie is. <laughs> it's a cold classic. Yeah. It's like that's yeah. a that's a that's a good guess, but uh, that's the whiff I, that John I Mark that needed. I watched that every couple years. I watch mm. that again. I think it Still holds up. up. It's got a kooky vibe to it, and it was kooky to begin with. So those movies usually do hold up. John Mark, there is some definitely on my list that you should absolutely get, but uh, there's plenty on the big list too. You need to take advantage <laughs> of this here whiff. I um. This is probably not on the list. I mean, it, it might be on the list, but it's probably not in the top or whatever. Uh, but I have to go with my heart. My favorite movie of all time, Return of the Living Dead. That is number three on my list. <laughs> Which one is it? Return, Return of the, the Living, Living Dead. Dead. Uh, yeah, well, my list is in no particular order. But that gets you on the board for five points. Um, because, come on, how could that not be on the fucking list? But I, know, right? I talk to people all the fucking time that have no idea what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that movie. So it is pretty fucking niche. You but, must well, educate them. I try to. I say, get that damn screwdriver out of my head. I laugh loudly and they cross their eyes at me and walk away. <laughs> but well, you're on the board. Mall is. Isn't quite as good. Yeah. We live in the mall now. That's all. Um, okay, Lyle. Looking good still. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna pull down my pants. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like this trend. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say a movie that I really fucking hate. I can't stand it anymore. Mm-hmm. It it it. If you were asking um, uh, something that got ruined for me, I would say this movie. I'm gonna go with Grease. Oh, hmm. mm, that's a great guess and not on the list. Yeah. That surprises me. It's not on the big list. <laughs> yeah, because, like everybody knows that fucking movie. Yeah, I think People it definitely sing qualifies. It all the time. They get drunk and sing old versions. Of ooh, it and ooh, stuff. Ooh. Ah. Yeah, I I got so sick of those songs just being friends with so many of the drama kids in high school. <laughs> it's like oh yeah, well you, you remember <laughs> production came around and just like yeah, the one, the one, and they would all just impromptu while we were out trying to smoke cigarettes during break, <laughs> start yeah. performing it. Yeah. Anywho, well, there's a whiff, Christopher. It's a mm. chance to pull ahead here. What about Back to the Future? Back to the Future, not on this list. Mm. I think that's probably too. Too big of a like everyone knows that one, you know, like uh, huge okay, hit. Good to but, know. Uh, okay, good to know. I'm just it's got some it's got my... some earmarkings of the mm. the cult classic for sure. It is definitely okay. rewatchable. I think that's the biggest thing. How many like can you watch this movie a hundred times? And mm. uh, is there a whole subculture that's come out of it? It checks both those boxes. All right, John Mark, huge opportunity here. You got five on the board, so you don't need a huge one to get right back in. Okay, so I, I think the problem here with my guesses is going to be that, like, the movies that are, like, the movies that I want to guess are legitimately cult classics, but they're, like, probably cult, too, cult classics, too obscure. you know what I'm saying? You might be surprised. Um, Watch your rattling, though. Um, But, so this is not the one that I, I want to say because the one I really want to say <laughs> Is probably not going to be anywhere on the list, but it might be um, mine for five. But you need a big one at this point. But I'm going to say a different one, which I think is probably a cult classic. It was Eraserhead. Eraserhead is another one that's on my list. Yeah, that definitely should be on the big one. But I think it is. It's another one of those movies that a lot of people just don't know. Maybe they know the name, but they haven't watched it. <laughs> All right. Well, that is a polarizing film, but that got you another five. Off the rosters list. John Mark might get all the ones on the rosters list, actually. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, but you're going to need one of these big ones to stay in the game here. But, Lyle, you got a chance uh-huh. to pull ahead. I do. I do. And I, I'm i having issues because we there's some movies that... Because he can't take his pants off any further. <laughs> I can't. They're already around I his ankle. Can, but I won't. No, I will. I must. You must. Um... God damn it. Uh, I, I can't think of the name of the movie. Well, that's going to hurt I can you. tell you who's in it. I can tell you everything about it. I can mm. cite shit from the movie. You know what? I wouldn't How about do this that. One? How about this one? Uh, I can't. Okay. So I pull down my pants, and all of a sudden I hear coconuts going. Oh, I think I know where you're going with this one, but I'm going to need you to say it. Uh... <laughs> Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Number fucking three. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That is one that I thought me. Lyle might get because we certainly <laughs> were damn close we, to starting a cult out of that fucking movie. Dude, we recorded the movie <laughs> on audio to have cassette. audio of it <laughs> so we could listen to it. Well, falling when asleep every night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or just chilling. Yeah, none of us had VCRs and TVs in our bedrooms at that point. Uh. Um I didn't anyway. Yeah. No, I, I listened to the, every ounce of that audio over and over. That's how I know so many of the uh, the words, the uh, dialogue. Okay, so Lyle has pulled dramatically ahead. You guys got some catching up to do. Um, 47. Mm. Got uh, two of the top three. Uh, wow. Number one is a movie that all of you should definitely get, and it's absolutely mm. a cult film. Um mm. But, Christopher, you're going to need that one. Uh, not as badly as John Mark does, but uh, yeah. top top four, in, or the number four and number five still open, too. And this is top 25. We got some big numbers still. Hmm. Well, you know what I'm going to do, Ron. I'm going to pull, pull my pants, pants down. down. <laughs> I'm going to pour myself a little white Russian. Okay. Attaboy. Do the bides. Oh, there we go. Now, Big Lebowski. I, I personally think it's too low, but it's not that low. It's number eight, and that gets you right back in it. Uh, 18. So, uh, yeah, number eight. Mm, I guess it's fair. It, it's another one that everyone knows, but I still run into people all the time that have never fucking seen it. 
it's hard for me to i mean those are my two favorite movies the holy grail and big lebowski so it's hard for me to see it as any other thing than this epic thing but a lot of people have never seen it Mm. so i guess number eight is fair okay john mark you're really going to need a a big in here um score here how about the princess bride Ooh, that is a good one. I bet that was on the list further down, but no. no. I didn't hear what was Lyle's last guess. What was what he guessed? Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. God damn it, man. Yeah, so Christopher now has 37. To In John a row? Mark's t- <laughs> John Mark's 10 and Lyle's 47. Uh, do a few more rounds. Yeah, you're Watch. right. I, I do, I do kind of bend over for these <laughs> list, <laughs> listicle things it's so funny because you know so many of them um, i know i just but the, the thing is is like i know too many of them and the ones i'm really attached to are like probably one. way too obscure to like really count but they're the, my favorite ones you know that's, that's, that's my problem right now too. my brain goes to yeah you know, you're like, gonna I laugh i start if... saying the like obscure shit but i'm like but i also want to win <laughs> i think you'll laugh if you don't get number one you probably all will um all right chris or uh no we're back to lyle now yeah. Keep mm. that train rolling. How low can those pants go? Interesting. <laughs> um, Just let me look up top 100 cult films real quick. And... <laughs> cult uh, classic. Spell it right. I'm going to no, pull down my pants. Here, my keyboard. It's loud. Text with my wiener. <laughs> no, I'm not an answer. Uh... I guess I'm gonna have to throw one out there. I just uh, way out of the wing dinghy. Okay. Um, I'm gonna pull my pants now, <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna be in California, and there's gonna be a grandfather that's gonna walk out and says, "God damn vampires! Oh, They're all God. down here in L.A." Mm. So oh. uh, I'm gonna say uh, that's not an interview with a vampire. That's mm-hmm. Lost Boys, baby. Lost Boys number seventeen, which puts nice. you to fifty-seven. Yeah. Trucking mm-hmm. right along. Christopher, you need one of these 20 pointers or more, and you're uh, not only right back in it, but you could be back in the It's in hard because I'm, I'm torn now between like ones that I I believe that are my favorite quote classics, and uh, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to go with my favorite. Um, what about Fright Night? Mm, that's an interesting uh, one. Not on the list, though. Damn it. I'm going to shut that gauntlet favorites well i'm interested in what the, that would have been but john mark now is your time if ever you're gonna do it it's my Christ- time to shine man we're still in there for sure one good answer and he's uh in the lead you need a couple to get back in it um i'm i'm, I'm probably not gonna get any of these i'm too delirious but um my guess is um Another one of my favorite movies, um, and it's probably way too obscure for this list, but uh, Wild Zero. Not on the list. I don't know that one. It's Guitar Wolf's movie. I thought it might be Guitar Wolf. Uh, I guess I know of it. I don't think I've seen it, but they popped in my head it. as soon as you said it. Yep. Okay. It's, it's amazing cult film, but uh, yeah, a, a bit more obscure. Yeah. Um, all right, Lyle. That's your chance to pull it all the way out and uh, smack Christopher across the face. I'm not writing John Mark off yet, but looking at the clock, we don't have time for too many more rounds. Um, but I want to give Christopher a chance to get some of those top fives. Well, I'm going to th- go, I think. And I'm try- Oh, okay, okay. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do this one. Uh, I'm going to pull down my pants. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to find myself in front of three Devil's Rejects. Hmm. Oh, that's a good Rob guess. Zombie. That's a good guess. That would definitely be on cult classic horror films list. But uh, nope, not on this list. There are some, uh, quite a few Try. horror movies on this list. Uh, mm. A few comedies. Um, some that you would definitely call dramas. But uh, yeah, well, that is a big opportunity for Christopher okay. and possibly John Mark. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to go with Dead Alive. Mm, that's a great one, too. No? Great pick. Yeah. Fuck off. Not your list, not that list. This is bullshit, man. Well, 
It, it is bullshit. Again, I call bullshit. Again, again how many rigged. people do you know have actually seen Dead Alive, though? All of us. <laughs> yes. I, I, Lyle? I, don't, I bet I don't Lyle care. hasn't. It's Peter Jackson's, uh, I guess, it, I don't second think film? Seen. Second third. or third? Third? Yeah, second? Was, third? Uh, Bad Taste was his first, I believe. Yeah. I think so. Bad um, taste. Th- yeah. Maybe it was his second, and I then think what, it, like meet the Feebles. Meet the Feebles and then, was probably three, yeah. and then beautiful creatures, which was a total departure. Heavenly, yeah. Heavenly creatures, yeah. Yet still disturbing in its own way. <laughs> There's some disturbing yeah. shit. True story. Creatures, hmm. yeah. Um, okay, well, it's definitely looking like it's going to come down between. Uh, okay, my turn. Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. That was Christopher's guess. Um, Devil's Rejects gave me an idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one that should absolutely be on the list. I'm surprised I didn't add that to my list, actually. What the fuck? That's like the ultimate cult film. I know. I know it. Let me, let me make sure, because it should be on the list. Like, every time, like, y- you watch that, there like, are every ones time that are you watch close. that movie, you're like, astonished and surprised again about how fucking just insane it yeah. is that it exists and it just has that weird look it that everything about it just feels like you shouldn't be looking at it <laughs> it's like it's ugly to look at it's raw yeah. it's just, it just like seems like this, is, this isn't right it's so it's so awesome though it's so fucking good and the uh, if you're into that movie and you have not seen the uh texas chainsaw massacre family album or family portrait it's like a two and a half hour very poorly done documentary it's mostly a collection of talking heads with the all the actors and people involved with it but it, it's really really good you get all sorts of insight into the making of that movie very inspiring for low budget filmmakers for sure um good guess I'm though gonna th- i'm gonna throw a curveball at you right you ready oh, for this you're gonna hook us mm. with a banana i am mm-hmm. i'm gonna pull down my pants <laughs> <laughs> And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, you filthy bastards, <laughs> and say, Johnny okay. Dangerously. <laughs> you filthy bastards. <laughs> yeah. Remember when they said that? Uh, it was uh, the short guy. Um, it's like, oh, you dirty bastards. I don't remember. Isn't that what Fargan Ice Holes is from? Yeah, too? Oh, oh yeah, Fargan Ice Holes. <laughs> Wait, Fargan what are you, Ice Holes. What are you talking about? Fargan Ice Holes. Yeah. <laughs> It should be yeah. ringing true. Kind of dangerously, dude. Well, what's the guess? It's gotta be a Colf. Which one? Fucking Johnny, Johnny Dangerously. Dangerously. Oh, I have not what? seen that movie for fucking ever. No, Locking not it? not on the list. But yeah, that definitely. It was Danny DeVito, is what I was thinking. That's of. definitely a cult classic for sure. Well, it's a I cult movie. So. <laughs> I don't know. If, is it a cult classic? I don't hear people bringing that one up very often. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to get a couple more guesses, and so I'm gonna just put mine out in front. Of I'm next, right? I think. Yeah. Heathers. Heathers is one on my list. Oh, oh good, good yeah. choice. But that Fuck. gives you five. That puts you up to 42. Or, uh, yeah, 42. And that means uh, you're within 15 of passing Lyle. And let me remind you, number one, number four, number five, and number six are all over 20 points, and they have not been claimed yet. Um, let me take a look. I say that three... Uh, three out of that I gotta group get at least is one of these fucking things that's on the obvious. actual list. Jesus. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, all right, now's your shot. Now or never. Fuck, I don't know. Reservoir Dogs. Mm. Hmm. Not a bad one, but not on the list. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> what you got, Lau? Pull your pants down. Are Tell you, us about you it. you pulling your pants oh, down oh, to oh. now? I gotta pull my pants up. Because this is a PG movie. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm going to be... <laughs> Way to be conscious. Fashionably conscious. be going down Yellow Brick Road. And I might run into a scarecrow. Maybe a tin man. Maybe a little girl named Dorothy with her little dog. And say... What the hell, the hell is the name of the fucking movie? <laughs> Help me out, boy. There's this are wizard you, in you, either... Are you serious right now? I'm, I'm having a mind... Yeah, blank. I... I'm kind of sick. I'm coming off a cold, so. Yeah, you're going for the Wizard of Oz, are you? Wizard of Oz, bam. I only helped you because it's not on the list. 
<laughs> now, had you said Return uh, to Oz, which is also not on the list, that at least yeah. would be a bona fide cult classic. But Love I mean, the yeah. Wizard of Oz yeah. is often regarded as one of the greatest yeah. works of, of all cinema. Time. Of That's all why time. it should be a cult classic. Well, cult. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I like your logic, Lyle. Well, listen, Lyle is in the lead, so I'm not going right. to argue with his logic, but uh, uh, that one might be shaky. Okay, <laughs> uh, okay I'm going to go with Keep a your pants Clockwork up. Orange. Uh, ooh, there you go. Oh, you're back in it. Uh, well, you're getting back in it. That is number 19, which brings you to an even 50. Ooh, Lyle's mm. within seven tantalizing points. If he whiffs a couple more rounds and you get anything, you're probably going to beat him. Um, but Only let's give John Mark a try to... John Mark, who knows? He can go on a run and get all four that are still in the top six. Uh, all three. Four. <laughs> Army of Darkness. Well, there you go. That's not a whiff. That's a, a decent chunk of points for 12. That's number 15. Takes you mm. to 22. you got some work to do, but it's not as hopeless. If, if this isn't on your list, your list is wrong. Okay, well, you're Bottom winning. So. Yeah. so what I'm going to do is pull down my pants <laughs> and say, another brick in the wall. wall. Oh, interesting. Pink Floyd even... the Wall. That is a cult classic. Not not a good sound, Lyle. Not a good response. <laughs> yeah. It should oh, be number boy. one. Um, it, Damn it. it should be number one. It's a good it's a good guess, and it's definitely a cult classic, but not on the list. It's funny, I hadn't it, I hadn't even thought about that one. Don't know if it would have made it on my uh, Ronster list anyway, but this is oh. interesting because Christopher now has mm-hmm. so many uh if you get anything from the top twenty on or up mm. You are Sprung tied or in the lead with Lyle. And I whiffed. I whiffed a lot early on. I'm gonna go with uh, the Goonies. We go mm-hmm. something like more, more like heartfelt, like lighthearted. I mean. Yeah, that's a great guess. Yeah. I don't know why it's not on the list. Maybe mm. because you it's, should have uh... said you're gonna pull your pants down and say, "Hey, you yeah. guys." <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm taking them back. I'm taking them all back. I'm taking them all. This, uh, is my, this is my wish right here. Yeah, bitch. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. Okay. All right, John Mark. If you get. One of these other ones, you are back in it. One of these other top ones. Because you're at 22 right now. I don't know. I've got nothing. <laughs> I know. you got number one in there. Um, you should definitely have number five. Um, alien. Oh, ooh, That's a good guess, but no. Hmm. I think Alien was too much of a, a phenomenon. Like That's one that everyone knows. I, not that number one... I, some of these, I mean, everyone knows these, but... Number one was not a big box office hit, but it really kind of defined cult classic for a while. Cult movie, anyway. Um, okay, Lyle, your chance to uh, solidify okay. your lead here. You got tons of options. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to pull my pull pants, pants down, down. Okay. and I'm going to walk down the aisle of this hotel, right? And I'm going to see this this guy sitting at the bar by himself, and he's smoking a cigarette, and I'll be like. Hey, Jack, can I uh, bum a smoke from you? Mm. And uh, he ends up, uh, you know, pretty much killing his whole family and freezing out in the, the foyer out in the, in the forest. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the shiny. The shinning. The shinning. You want to get sued? Uh, the shinning <laughs> is not on the list. What? I think that's a good guess. Uh, that that definitely belongs somewhere on the top 25. I, Certainly more than a, a handful of these, I would say. Um, that is a great guess and another good opportunity for Christopher here. Good, but wrong. Right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Ron. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you a pair of glasses and oh. then I'm going to pull down my pants and bend <laughs> over. And when you put the glasses on, it's going to reconsume on my butt cheeks because they live. Oh, that is a great guess. That's not on the list. <laughs> yeah. Give me my glasses back. Again. <laughs> nope. <laughs> they belong to me in your butt face now. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not sure that that's was a... certainly 100%. And it uh, amongst cult classic aficionado, uh, aficionados, <laughs> they would have guessed that too. Um, but I do think that's probably a bit, a bit obscure. I bet people okay. see those memes all the time and they have no fucking clue what movie that's from. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was a great guess and definitely a cult classic and should be higher on the list. John Mark, I can't believe I'm saying it, but you are still in this. Uh, how about if John Mark gets a good one here, we'll do a couple more rounds. If he doesn't, we'll go one more round. Does that Perfect. sound fair? 
Yeah. Because we're, uh, okay, what we're I'm getting close to weeding. I'm going to dig a hole in the ground, <laughs> and I'm going to pull down my pants, and I'm going to say Tremors. Oh, yeah, that's a good guess, too, but no, not Jesus. on the list. Okay. Let's do one more round. Hit All it. Right. Final round, on, Lyle. Lyle. You need Finish to strong, baby. You need something. Uh, let me think. Let me think one. God damn. Don't um, even bother pulling the pants up. Just keep them down, son. Let the wind right. blow up the canyon. So the the pants maintain down. <laughs> and gotcha. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say there's a lot of lot of evil and a lot of darkness going on in a little place called Gotham. And uh, I'm gonna go with Batman, the original Batman. Mm. Batman, eight, huh? Michael Keaton. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think Batman was too damn big, and. Uh, it was our cult classic, buddy. Well, <laughs> we, we, we but it, it was everyone's classic. Uh, yeah. So many times. And now actually considered a classic film. Um, yeah. Good guess, though, but gives Christopher one last chance to take this home with really anything mm. above. Uh, well, you already got 19, so you need 18 or higher to win, or we can do a. Uh, if you tie, we'll get we'll do one more round. I'm going to go with The Thing. Hmm, good guess. That's a good movie. But not on this list. Man. Uh, man. Keep all right, Lyle, you took it home. Hot nice. man. Well good done. Good job. I well, my pants up now. I guess to cold. be a full round, we better let can uh, I make a, John can Mark I make a do one guess last guess. That doesn't, that doesn't count? Yeah. It'll count. You just can't win. Big Trouble in Little China. <sighs> oh, you know, I almost put that on my list, but uh, I didn't for some well, reason. What about Conan, the Barbarian? Well, uh, too big. No, yeah, too big. Well, oh. uh, okay, so Lyle won 57. Chris was almost there with 50. And John Mark could have got a couple lucky breaks with 22. But uh, all in all, it was a tough game. And I think you guys did really well. Number one, I think you're all going <laughs> to make a groaning noise Blade Runner. Uh, oh my god now i, I know was that i guess that but i was like that's no that's that's too that's it, too much in the zeitgeist to be a cult it, well film, it, right? it, like, it is now well, they made a game out of it it is now it because was... of the game well because they made the sequel the sequel and that brought it back but you got to remember like when dvds were new i remember everyone was stoked to get the director's cut and then there was the old vhs tapes one of them had the narration, like the old yeah. film noir voiceovers, one of them did. There was like five versions of that film. Yeah, yeah, but no, but not everyone knew that, and it wasn't a big success in the box office. So, it was absolutely for uh, a, a good run, the uh, cult classic. Number four, Shaun of the Dead. I never would have oh, guessed wow. that, but okay. it works. Number five, I'm kind of surprised. Um, I thought if anyone, John Mark might get here. The original Mad Max. Well, that's what I was just thinking of. Like was before Mad Thunderdome, Max. before Road Warrior, and certainly before yeah. the remakes, Mad Max was a bizarre little low-budget yeah. film from Down Under and absolutely a cult film. Number six, I think, plays in an interesting sort of way, and this probably tells you what some of the demographic was that were voting. Dazed and Confused. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, and the way that it's kind of faded, I think, only bolsters that. Like, everyone still remembers it, but... Not really. <laughs> you don't hear it talked about all that much. Um, you do see some. I of just did like Jay and Silent people. Bob or something. I was wondering yeah. if there's any Kevin Smith on this list. Um, yeah, Clerks is 14. Fuck. I That's thought right. for sure uh, one of you yeah. would guess Clerks because that was absolutely a cult film too. And uh, again, a lot like some of these, you couldn't see where it was going to go. Like Mad Max, especially, you could not foresee where the yeah, career, well, see, where like, those actors would go. Dazed and Confused didn't seem like a cult film to me because like. I I remember just like there was one summer where I was like working in like for the fish and wildlife department like finning fish you know to like mark them that they were like hatchery fish you know and, like, I did that we, one listen, here. we listened to like the Days and Confused soundtrack like over and over and over. And I bet over. more people like, have that soundtrack than have seen the movie. <laughs> probably because yeah. it, it brought some of those songs uh, back in the top forty. Lincoln Rock. Or like yep. right there. Oh yep. yeah, yeah. I know that. Dude, station. I did that one summer too. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder if it was the same summer. Could have been. Who <laughs> knows? Suddenly, uh, last summer. Like I feel like I would have. I feel like I would have remembered you though. Yeah. Yeah, it was like '93 or '90. We were dumb. Okay, it was close. like it was like three of us. That came out it was like me, Justin Ryder, and my buddy Mike Petty, and we all went up there. His Mike's mom got us the jobs, and we were just yeah. dumb. We would we would get the uh, fish to bite because you were in a single file line, 
you know, and you had the water running to the left of you, and you had two sinks. And that doesn't really matter. But you would, what we would do is get grab the fish, uh, while they were kind of drugged up and docile a little bit. They just mm-hmm. open their mouth and close yep. them, and we would, <laughs> we would put them on the back of uh, each other's um, shirts, uh, like at the sleeves, <laughs> and you wouldn't know it. But until they woke up and then they jump out of you. It was just, we were just stupid. Unpleasant. All right. Well, let's get through the rest of this list real quick and because we got a guest coming on to join us for sure. Weird Triv. Uh, number was nine was fun. Airplane. That was definitely kind of oh, all on its uh, lonesome out there being a comedy. There's a couple more. Uh, Spaceballs should have been on it. <laughs> should have. It wasn't. Number 10, Fight Club. Um, huh. 11, Dusk Till Dawn. There was your Tarantino. Number 12, Blues Brothers, 100 fucking percent. Um, 13, Psycho, I disagree with because Psycho, again, is like considered one of the greatest films of all time. I don't know how you... It's a classic, classic, classic. It's just a classic, classic. classic. Uh, 16, Raising Arizona. I think that plays. Okay, yeah. Um, 18 is another one that I thought you guys would guess for sure. Spinal Tap. This is Spinal Tap. Oh, yeah. That is the mother of cult classics. 20... Not so much in our day, but looking back on, yeah, I suppose you could say Wayne's World is a bit of a cult classic. Um, I feel like it was everywhere, though, at the yeah. time, so it seems like it was a hit. When someone said Evil Dead, I was surprised no one went for uh, an army of darkness. No one went for Evil I Dead 2. I did. Well, you went for with, no, I know, but uh, no one guessed Evil Dead 2, oh, right, which was right. number 21. It wasn't worth that many points either. But also, Night of the Living Dead. That was the mm. one I thought you guys might be getting close to with uh, your Texas Chainsaw Massacres, etc. 23, the original Poltergeist. 24, oh. Gremlins. I don't know if I agree with Gremlins, I guess, kind or of. Or Poltergeist, man. That's, yeah. That's like... Well, we are at 23 and 24 and 25. And 25, again, this was a huge movie, huge soundtrack. You couldn't escape it at the time. But it does feel like a cult classic now, and that is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, hmm. but okay. I think it's more of one of those, uh, yeah, like John Mark said, sort of zeitgeisty. Um, Bueller, uh, Bueller, well, I saw that Back the to the Future. Like, oh, this is, it seemed like it was a big, big film. It I was huge. Yeah, it it was never out of the public eye. Uh, that right. that that was a big cult. If that was a cult classic, so I don't agree with that one. But for the most part, it's a fair list. That brunette in that movie was so pretty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Grey? Well, that was a, wasn't that his sister? His grumpy sister? That, that was his sister, yeah. yeah oh, you think thinking of his girlfriend. Yeah. 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 Well, that wasn't All right, Phoebe you guys, Cates, you want to take a quick break and get our guest on here? We're pretty behind, a little behind. Yeah, go ahead and get the guest. I'm going to drain my Bam. guest. <laughs> I'm going to join Lyle in taking off my pants we all are here, and <laughs> without further ado, I'd love to welcome our guest tonight for Weird Trivia, the lovely TJ. Hello. Hello. TJ. How's everybody? How do? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah, I just saw TJ a uh, really. couple of days ago yeah. dropping some art off. Yeah. One of my paintings. Always glad I'm to have you, and you sound fabulous. Um you kind of becoming a an old pro at this. Put the cat food up. Well, we'll see. This is this is my th- third time. Mm-hmm. Have you won yet? I can't remember. I did. I won the first time and I lost the second oh. time. Okay. Uh, well, this. Well, you know the secret is is you got to have your pants off. <laughs> yeah, Lyle just won the last game. Spoilers uh, for when you're listening yeah. back. But uh, and he uh, he had a well a method. I guess you'll just have to listen. Yeah, you'll have just to give it away. Later. I'd like to hear the analyles for those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he really painted a picture. Uh, Chris, right, are you we... chasing the kid out of cat food, or are you... <laughs> uh, one of the two? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm uh, pet sitting for Logan's mom, and mm. so I have a dog over here. I'm wrangling kitten, dog, child, and one old cat that's pissed the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you have a you have a dog in the house? What kind yeah, of dog is it? Pit bull, really sweet little animal, oh, wow. not little giant. But uh, just wants to be loved and get into everything, of course. <laughs> Gets along with your right. cats, huh? This one likes cats. The kitten is super obsessed and intrigued and constantly doing like that silent hiss. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, my older cat is just like, why? 
<laughs> Why? My father has forsaken us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I make jokes all the time, and I, I'm actually almost half serious about it. But my parents, you know, they, they're at their house. They have this, what they call the hooch, right? And it's basically just an old <laughs> kind of a garage area, you know, and a shop area where you mess around out there and stuff. And they have feral cats. They've been dealing with feral cats for like 10 years, not saying anything about it. And it, it they almost got overran. Kind of like, uh, remember Ron down at Top Foods? You'd mm-hmm. go down there and feed the cats. Yeah, and watch the well, drive at, in. at the very <laughs> bottom of the property, um, you know, the very, very, very back part of the yard where it used to be a horse pasture, but now they put apartments there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a similar site. <laughs> yeah. The people from the apartments, like, feed, put the feeders out and feed the cats. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a problem, right. but uh, it's hard to not. <laughs> well, I was always kind of like trying to hint to you that maybe you should stop by and maybe grab a handful of them. Oh, man, I've got all <laughs> I can handle. Thank you very little. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bunch of little babies, new babies out. I know it's sad, but uh, no. I think they've been living in my boat. And the last one I took on was homeless, uh, so I feel like I've done my duty at least for a while. There you go. All Good right, Christopher, point. what you got for us? It's been so long. Uh, I it's so long apparently we've forgotten how this starts, Ron. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, completely. <laughs> I don't even have my phone handy. But I guess uh, you're singing it, motherfucker. I'll sing it if I don't pull it up immediately. It's weird trivia with Christopher F. All right. Uh, okay, we're gonna go traditional order tonight. I got four questions for y'all. Let's get right to it here. I think that's gonna uh, work in my one. favor because I'm the only one that heard the theme song. So mm-hmm. let's do it. <laughs> that's weird. Uh, okay. A recent study determined that even though the pandemic is hopefully nearing its end, a certain group of people will still likely be wearing their masks for the foreseeable future. What type of people will you likely still see wearing a mask as the pandemic continues to wane? Hold on. Stop it! (laughs) Is he chasing his own tail? The kitten this time. All right. Is it A, people who are anti-vaccination? Hmm. Is it be people who don't like talking with other people? <laughs> these again, these are people that are, are more likely to still continue to wear a mask even as the pandemic ends. Okay. Is it C, people who don't consume the news on a regular basis? Hmm, interesting. Or is it D, people who are ugly? This is that is funny because <laughs> when I was working with the local business, not. Yeah, maybe like a year or so into the pandemic when they were just starting to open back up and everyone was still wearing masks. We had a discussion. She even wrote an article for the Comet magazine about how nobody looks as pretty once they take the mask off. Mm-hmm. Not because they're ugly, but because you only see half their face, especially if you meet somebody and you start interacting with them, you make up the bottom half of their face to your own specifications you and i thought that was fascinating i hadn't thought of it that way until she pointed that out and it's true so many of us like when we when i started going out for the first time the servers once they one once they finally took the masks off i was like holy shit they don't look anything like i imagined (laughs) and it was weird um (laughs) how did you word that that uh answer d because they're ugly people <laughs> who are ugly i don't want to go with such a harsh answer <laughs> but i think a lot of people found an exotic beauty um by only be, having to show half their fucking face sure and and not because again not because they're necessarily ugly quote unquote but because maybe they have eyes that don't really shine when their schnoz gets in the way <laughs> uh-huh. <Yeah. laughs> there's a lot to it okay interesting question though yeah Jump yeah, I know. Fucking mm-hmm. I'm going to say people that don't want to talk to anybody else. People who maybe just don't want to jibber-jab. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Lyle. I don't miss that, everyone being muffled. I, I'm going to go with uh, the news thing, but I do want to state a little story. Um, and it's funny because I didn't realize it till about two weeks ago. I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but I'm just trying to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, have to be the same thing. COVID has really brought a lot of ugly people <laughs> to to society in general. Oh, I, I noticed it because I was at Safeway, grocery shopping, and all these people they're they're all skinny fat. They got like super skinny faces, but they're like you know obese. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant and it's ugly personality. You're you're saying actually physically ugly. No, I'm just saying they they have skinny faces, so you know they were skinny at one time, but. Periodically through a, like a year, maybe two, they got obese. And so they're kind of skinny fat. I've noticed it like <laughs> like almost one uh, at least. The uh, opinions of it. Lyle Thompson does not necessarily reflect <laughs> the opinions of the rest of <laughs> I'm being real about it. You can do whatever you want with it. I just thought anyway. Well, is that even how it works, though? Skinny face, big thing. body means you were once skinny. I think. I no, think no, you no, can balloon no, up no, all no. over. You know, you know what I'm talking about, like skinny fat. Like we're a, a face is skinny because she was skinny at one time. Uh, now, but, now it's only a she. she. <laughs> well, I'm not you know, looking at guys. Okay. I don't even see them. I don't know if that's a save or not. <laughs> okay. I'm well, just, what's your? Uh, in general, where, where I'm not saying going? everybody. I'm just saying there's a there's a big in, influx where we are at in East Wenatchee, mm -hmm. and specifically at Safeway. <laughs> so I guess Lyle's yeah, like, not well, into. No. He's not more. I wonder if that's from COVID, or I wonder if it's just people being lazy. Well, look, I gained a shit ton of fucking weight. I went from the craziness of radar station to a pandemic. I gained like thirty fucking pounds. The first place I saw it was in my face, though. I'm still trying to shed that fat, honestly. No. Walking uh, every day, and I guess if I quit drinking, I'd probably be skinny again. I don't eat much. <laughs> Anywho, where are you going, Lyle? Are you going with the... The news. News story. I would say people who don't want to talk to people. It's going to be like the new AirPods for tuning people out. Perfect. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't work with me. <laughs> the second I put my fucking headphones on, someone taps me on the shoulder at the bar every time. But uh, I think okay. that does work with most people. All right. Question two. Jamie Lee Curtis is maybe the original Scream Queen, a verified movie star, a badass, but she's also more than that. One of the following statements about Jamie Lee Curtis is true. The rest I made up. Pick the true one. Is it A, she got a law degree in Kentucky while at the height of her stardom. Kentucky. Very specific. Is it B, she has invented several different types of diapers. <laughs> See, she raises money for nearly extinct butterflies. Hmm, that sounds Hollywoody. Or is it D? She's too scared to watch horror movies. Oh boy, I feel like I would know that one, and it sounds familiar. And I'm wondering if I do know that one, but I feel like she watches her own movies. She's been in quite a few horror movies. Well, the butterfly thing was ringing true for some reason, but. <laughs> inventing diapers I know that <clears throat> because because of her um, being involved with act, acti Activia Activa whatever that uh, probiotic yogurt is that's supposed to make you poop better she has been <laughs> did, did the boy hear that <laughs> no he's watching the perfectly cat. <laughs> timed laugh track um, <laughs> I know that there are a lot of poop jokes involving her but I think that you might know that poop jokes and included that Ooh. is your poop things a bit <sighs> without rambling and rambling. I, I don't know. I'd, your poops are not in nature. I th I'm torn between the butterfly and the doesn't watch your, I, doesn't necessarily mean she doesn't watch her own movies. Maybe she forces herself to watch her. I like that answer. I'm going to go with that. One the of the, uh, it is a screen queen mm -hmm. focused question. And that one, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you made it up, you well played, bitch. I love her. I've always mm -hmm. loved her. I think she's okay. a badass. John Mark. What was the what was the first answer? She got a law degree in Kentucky. Kentucky. Very Kentucky sounding. I'm torn between the Kentucky law degree and the brown herring of the diapers. Um 
there's, there's got to be a story behind that. Eh, let's go with the diapers. Fuck it. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I didn't know if you guys knew, but without cameras, you kind of can't tell, but my pants are still down. <laughs> and I'm going to go with uh, the assortment of diapers. Try them out. No shit. Mm. While my pants are still down. Hmm. Well, I'm dying to know where DJ goes with this, because so far I'm on an island. I'm going brown herring all the way, diapers. Mm. Oh, I'm on a poop-free island, and I'm feeling sad about it. I want to be on Which your guys' never say again. Island. Although I wouldn't be surprised if it was law degree, but I'm going with the poop thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Damn it. Question three on the topic of famous movie stars. Robert Downey Jr. sure had a comeback. From prison time to full-on addiction, we almost never had Iron Man as we know and love it. Uh, once, Robert Downey Jr. Pub publicly <laughs> accredited this to his sobriety. <coughs> Sorry, for a second there I thought the comeback was from prison time to full-on addiction. <laughs> there was more. <laughs> what a rebound. A success story for the ages. You can do it. Too. Uh, okay. What did he uh, credit to his sobriety directly? Was it A, Burger King? Was it B, World of Warcraft? Was it C, Sour Patch Kids? <laughs> or was it D? I'm okay. You guys there? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I didn't oh, hear D. The suspense oh. is killing me. Yeah, I thought sorry, I'm having some it. <laughs> technical difficulties. Or was it D? Phone sex lines. All right. <laughs> Into the pain. Again, he accredited one of these <laughs> publicly at one point to his sobriety. Burger King, World of Warcraft, Sour Patch Kids, or phone sex lines. What do you got, Roster? I, I'm trying to do the math in my head. On, I guess I don't really know when World of Warcraft started. Versus where his career was at that time. Um, mm -hmm. But the only reason, I mean, it's all a guess, but the only reason I'm leaning toward that is because I know that that, like, I used to have friends that played EverQuest. I think mm -hmm. that's the name of it. It's a World of Warcraft-esque type game. They called it Evercrack <laughs> because they couldn't, like, it became another addiction, but it's not the kind of addiction that makes you beat up your girlfriend and drive into a hotel. Um... <laughs> I'm going to go with that. I think he found uh, a way. <laughs> I'd love the Burger King answer, but uh, I don't think chicken fries quite has the power. Man, that Whopper with cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, Boy, maybe I'm... Don't need crack. Fast cocaine. food has been proven to light up your brain in a similar way that actual narcotic... I might be talking myself into Burger King. Although... You leave him, you leave him with the Warcraft behind, moving I, on to the BK broiler? I think I'm going Big to stay King. in the world of Warcraft. Okay. But I might, All right. have, might have John fucked Mark. that up. Well, this this meatloaf that's in the oven is starting to meatify, and the the <laughs> delicious scents and aromas that I'm getting are making me want to guess Burger King. Mm -hmm. I love the smell of Burger King. Got it. Damn. John Mark. Burger King. I think oh, he just went with shit. It. Oh, no okay. analyzing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is Chris I'm, not hearing us at all? Oh. I'm, I'm, you heard John Mark. Just... I did. Yeah, I did. Uh, Lyle. So I'm going to take my pants down and I'm going to call me some 1 800 lines and uh, maybe, you know, because that's a type of uh, addiction too. You'd be a sex addict and uh, maybe it's not as fun without the drugs, though. So. Yeah, I, really? I guess any of these things you could have gotten re-addicted re to, but is that... Not doing it right, then. Maybe somebody on the other line uh, broke well, no, the they're like, wall and talked to him about addiction. <laughs> Got him on the right path. Like, I'm really curious dude, about uh, the answer. You want to be really high when you're having good sex, you know what I mean? I, I did phone Are sex a few times. You guys ever do phone sex back in the day? Ever call it mm. up? Nope. Most of the ones back I called were just morning. recordings, which, you know, it worked, but... As soon as I was talking to a real life person, I choked, <laughs> and not in the good way. It's nutted real fast. No, I mean hey, I was just boy. like, like oh, a real girl. I mean, listen, when I was calling phone sex uh, lines, I, I was still in high school. <laughs> I had been with women, but uh, I was curious about it all. But well, I wonder. You... Well, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with that. We'll go with that. You guys yeah, never did phone sex. sex? What about you, Chris? Mm, I mean, I called it when I was a kid and stuff just to fuck around and find out with my friends, but mm -hmm. I never actually 
did it. Hmm. No. Like, did it, did it. TJ, like, what about you? You ever, you ever pick up the phone and dial 9100 anything? Um, it was the question, did I ever call a phone sex line or did I ever work one? Hmm. Oh. Ah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> can neither confirm nor deny that story. Mm. Mm. Allegedly. Well, be... Allegedly. As mm -hmm. Allegedly. Would that would be an interesting um, gig. Okay, so the answers were... Burger King, World of Warcraft, Sour Patch Kids, or Phone Sex. I'm so hungry. <laughs> For junk I mean, and World of Warcraft sex. is like thousands of hours of painting miniatures. I guess that would keep you clean. <sighs> oh, is there um, a real world of Warcraft? Oh, yeah. No, World of Warcraft's a game that you play, but you have to have, like, this full army of miniatures. No, that's Warhammer you're thinking of. Yeah, World of Warcraft is. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, well, World of Warcraft keeps you online. Either so way, it's thousands of hours, for sure. No, you can get stoned and play World of Warcraft. I know people who do that. Yeah, yeah. Dark, you know, the, the, the only reason why I never got into it was the fact that you had to have a subscription. It was, like, 20 right. or 30 bucks a month, and I was like, right. fuck that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm not going to. It, well, was, it was like it was like thirteen bucks. Oh uh, well, be anyway. You're well, still paying like, like thirty you know, bucks today's money. Six job. Bucks the game. Yeah. You just yeah, but think about okay. Think about this. Okay, think about how much entertainment per per cost ratio you're getting from that twelve bucks per month if you're playing World of Warcraft. It's somebody sounds a little so defensive about do. the World of Warcraft over there, John Mark. Dude, Were I, you a World I was of Warcraft for that fucking game. I played it for like four fucking years. Okay. Oh yeah, that doesn't surprise. I played several years of World of Warcraft as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I played the free starter uh, mm -hmm. account until I got to level 20, and then nothing changed after that, so I gave it up. <laughs> I can't okay, think so of John it without Mark, the John South Mark said Park. Burger King, so I'm going to tag on his coattails and Ooh. say Burger King. Fucking yeah. smart woman. Good call. Not that that's I've, the right answer. None, but... <laughs> none of the rest of them sound... Yeah, if it was war, if it was Warcraft, or Warhammer, I would have taken Warhammer, because I know that's a lot of work. Mm. Yeah, uh, Lyle, it's definitely did you go a hobby. phone sex on that one? Yeah. Of yeah. course you did, baby. Okay. <clears throat> pants down, by the way. <laughs> of course you did. Uh, okay, question for... Daily we... dubs. Doodly -doo. No, I, I didn't have any daily dubs this time. Sorry, Lyle. Damn it. Put your pants back on. <laughs> uh, they're on again. <laughs> okay. uh, a recent survey in the UK asked people if they would go to the moon on a trip if it was paid for, but also if their safety was guaranteed. Over half the surveyed people declined. Citing this. Well, come on, Yomo. <laughs> yeah, that's Yomo. how funny is that? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I wrote this question, too. That's funny. <laughs> oh, we were having that little joke earlier. Yomo. Yomo. <laughs> you only moon once is what uh, we decided Yomo was earlier. TJ, that was before you hopped on board. Right. No stupid Yomo. joke. <laughs> was it um, A, just a lack of interest? No, thanks. Yeah. B, that. they would not have access to Wi-Fi for the entire trip. <laughs> C, that the journey, would, the journey would take too long for them. Or D, they would be unable to smoke or drink on the trip. Mm. Okay, half the people <laughs> that were surveyed oh, said that if they were offered a free trip to the moon and guaranteed safety, they, would, they declined because of this. Again, lack of interest, no Wi-Fi, take too long. Or no smokes, no drinks. Oh, I'm really torn between lack of Wi-Fi and no drinks and smokes. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to sober up and quit your habits, but be a bad time to get the shakes. <laughs> up in space. Mm -hmm. I am just barely leaning more toward Wi-Fi. We, I think a lot of us panic at the thought of no access to our shit. Um, if I can't watch my favorite Office episode for the 7,000th time before bed, am I even alive? Um, texting addictions, etc., etc. Porn, okay, I'm curious. porn on I'd the like moon. I mean, come on. Why go to the moon if you're not going to whack it in zero Gs? You know what I'm saying? I'm going with the, uh, no Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Good guess. John Mark. I think Ron's probably right with the... I'm guessing the Wi-Fi, but I'm gonna go with no smoking, no drinking. Yeah. No smoking, no smoking. Uh, roundabout, roundhouse question about this: How many days do you think you could go without your cell phone? Just go around like could? we're going now, Ron. Go first. Well, let me define could. Like twenty. 
I, no, I'm my just talking entire, on average. Like, say, like, something business. happens. You know, how long could you do, do it? I mean, oh, you, could, okay. you could honestly go home and go get your phone. Indefinitely. Like, how long could you go without having your phone? Indefinitely. Yeah. I could I could definitely wean off the could. phone indefinitely. Wouldn't want to. I, I mean, you, but it's a cheat question if I'm able to get on my laptop and, um, you know, other such communique devices. Because sure. I still have to, I could not do it for one single day if I was giving up communication. That's my entire livelihood. And I think most of us have, um, wouldn't be able to not communicate with people for one reason or another. But phone, carrying the phone around with me, I have, yeah, oftentimes thought about regressing back to a uh, flip phone. Uh, a flip phone, yes, absolutely, because I have everything else on those other devices, and I can't tell you how many times I have literally thrown my phone because it won't shut the fuck up, or I just can't stop. I, it's not that I'm addicted to it; it's that it just goes off all the fucking time. Uh, um, one. Thing hey, what about another. you, John Mark? Um, I, I could, but the thing, so the thing about it right now is that like, I don't like have like a personal computer or laptop or anything. So like I do like basically all the stuff that I do, like banking, like I use my bank app, you know what I mean? Like all the stuff I do, yeah, like entire life is, is in that thing, mostly on, through my phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so if I had an actual computer that worked, it would be a different story, but like, like literally all this kind of you base. almost have to it blows me away yeah, that you like don't I, have I a working computer with my phone, you know like i use like yeah. apple pay like tap to pay and shit. you know what i mean tick concert tickets all, all on your phone so it'd be a yeah, wean off period kind of a weird thing well you, i'm with you at the beginning i'm i kind of like indefinite i didn't really wouldn't really matter to me but I, like that I, being I, I said actually, if i had access to all the things that i needed to do like, without yeah, my phone i could, I could do it easily i could see yeah. could put it down because totally but I, I find some of the the most uh, uh, it's almost a treat when I forget my phone at home and I'm across town. <laughs> it and is a treat. Do it running around doing bills. And <laughs> but just it does. Shit but uh, it, it, it even when I'm I'm okay with it, it does sort of instill a bit of like panic because I ne I don't leave it on purpose. So if I left it, I left it accidentally, and then I do the thing where it's like, did I leave it at home? It, oh, did where it is fall it? Fall out of my pocket? <laughs> did it? Yeah. yeah. Um, TJ, what about you? Uh, how are you with the idea of leaving your phone behind? I would happily do that. Yeah. yeah. I, would, I find it is a treat. I find it. Yeah. I, I feel good about it. Usually, you know, when I the, leave the it couple home. of times I've gone to Paris, but the first time I just didn't even have a phone plan. There was, I couldn't use my phone for anything over there, and it was such a treat. Yeah. I think the longer I went without it, the longer I could go without it. No. I was going to say the same thing when I was in Paris. I really didn't need it. You guys feel the same? <laughs> Chips to Paris. You're by that half <laughs> tower and it was leaning and you had to run away that's from a good, it. But. It's a good question for our audience. Uh, leave. Uh, I, I, I want to know if anyone has had full-on smartphone life for a few years and decided to go back to the flip phone. Like a lot of people have. I, I actually sort of try to make an effort sometimes when I'm like out and about to like not because it's it's so easy to be like oh well I, I have to entertain myself you know what i mean like i have to like b pass this time if you're mm. waiting for something or doing something that's like maybe, you, maybe you know what i mean you distracted <laughs> yeah I, um. I i oftentimes like purposefully be like okay like you're gonna be present in this moment and just observe what's happening around you you're not gonna look at your phone you're just gonna like look around at what's happening on the street or what's happening in where wherever you are and just like be present you know what i mean mm -hmm. well that's um, a huge thing yeah you know you go to a concert and you, know, you look around you you got know. you know a hundred thousand people sitting there with the their screen. phones in their hand. Yeah. yep yeah. you know they're not they're searching shit they're looking at the back of their phones it is weird you know? it's a different area i would, I would world. miss google maps yeah because i do i do that's get lost a big easily. one that is a big one Oh, maps. Remember having funny, to go to yeah. a gas station and just hoping whoever was behind the counter right. had a fucking clue I, where the bar to was, was? If it was a total internet ban, I would I would miss online gaming. Yeah. What's your jam online gaming real quick before we move on? Oh, God. I don't even want to admit it. It's this dumb game called Satisfactory where you basically build. You're a pioneer on a on a alien planet and you're basically practicing capitalism you're sucking up all the resources making things and sending them up in a shuttle back home and hmm. it's it's 
it's gotten to the point. It's gotten. I'm. A, I've gone far enough in it where it's like. It, I'm like. This is like work now. I gotta <laughs> stop playing this game. <laughs> yeah, There's I get. I get those playing. games. I don't play them, but I. I understand. I got a friend on Steam who I see is playing that like all the time now. It's like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. different game now. Okay, got it. Mm-hmm. There's a game <laughs> called uh, There Are Billions, and what you do is the same type of thing. You 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 create a colony, and you you try to set up defenses. And as you go along, there's zombie. There are a billion zombies at the end of the game that come and trash your shit and try to oh. kill you. Yeah, it's a really fun game, but it's just you, tear your you world get down. to a certain point and you kind of get gridlocked. You can't really yeah. build anymore. You really can't put any more, more defenses up than you do have. And then when they come at you, they come at you at every angle and they just kill you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fun. It's a fun game. My roommate Larry started playing it and he has built this sprawling metropolis that goes across the entire map of the continent that you're working on with walkways and electric trains and the, these pneumatic tubes that can transport you from one spot to another and teleporters and I'm just like, my world looks like it just looks so janky, it's conveyor belts, <laughs> spaghetti all over the place <laughs> Hamster wheels Kinda uh, Alright, well let's get back to the game so Christopher can put his runt to, to bed there. Yeah, I, I'm um, gonna I'm gonna get through this quick too because we're past it here. Yeah. So what was it number uh, three? That I, three was journey would take too long, just like this podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that's that's what I would say. Is that yeah. most people I think would quit. They wouldn't want to go because <clears throat> it would take too long. It's just that's there. Right. Too much time out of their lives. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. DJ. What are the answers again? Uh, just lack of interest, uh, no access to Wi-Fi, journey, journey would take too long, or they'd be unable to smoke and drink. I'm going to say they think it would be boring. I, they they don't want to go because no like we're exploring Mars now and the moon's boring. Lack of interest. Yes. All right. No, no YOMO. Fucking interesting Complete game lack here, of you YOMO. guys. We have a very interesting game here. Question right. one. A recent study determined that even though the pandemic is hopefully nearing its end, a certain group of people will still likely be wearing masks after it ends. And that group of people are people that don't think they're very attractive. Ugly folk. All right. Roster. It Off to a good back. start with yeah. the point. Boom. It's Question two. kind of true. I mean. Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, one of our original screen queens, but also a bit of an inventor. She has invented oh, no. several different types of diapers. John yes. Mark. Lyle and TJ got that correct for a point of pop. I had a little quote here. As a mother, Curtis became tired of carrying wipes and disposable diapers separately to change her infants. Since both baby supplies are needed at the same time, she invented a diaper that has a moisture-proof pocket for wipes attached. This invention offers more convenience and a simplification for busy parents. Oh, I don't know shit. if you can actually buy them or not, but kind of cool. Yeah. You know, if, if you were smart enough and made magazines, like porno magazines in the 80s, with a, a little bit of a pocket that <laughs> a had pocket with wipes. wipes in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> pocket for something to hold something. <laughs> yeah, uh, clean up. Rich Not a bad idea, Lyle. Like like they have in the ladies' magazines with the tear out perfume sample, but it could be a little pocket with a wipe in it. <laughs> Every eighth page. Every, everyone's tied at one point right now. Okay, interesting. Question three on the topic of famous movie stars: Robert Downey Jr. Sure made a comeback uh, from heroin to prison. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, he accredits Burger King for getting oh, through. Oh, and not necessarily for the reason you think. He uh, he said he was at a, having a moment where he had a car full of drugs and he pulled over because he was hungry. And he got this giant greasy burger and a big old soda from Burger King. And he got all the way through it and he goes, fuck, that's bad for me. I gotta turn my shit around. And that was the moment he decided to stop doing drugs. Wow. <laughs> and the fifth thing he had, basically. Was the burger. But he still enjoyed them. Mm. And that's why he put that scene in Iron Man where he uh, is eating a, a Burger King burger as he's coming up to the podium. No shit. Yeah. You never uh, know. Let's see. <laughs> John, Mark, and TJ got that correct, putting them a point ahead of the other guys. Oh, boy. <clears throat> and lastly, question four. Uh, a recent survey in the UK asked people if they would go to the moon. <laughs> what was we not YOLO? Uh, Yo, Yomo. Yomo. <laughs> Yomo. The only yeah. moon once. <laughs> the only moon once. Uh, if they would go, if the trip was paid for and completely safe, and half the people decided no, thank you, simply based on a lack of fucking interest. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me, even though I didn't. Oh, uh, TJ. The moon's boring. In. We're doing At better things end. now. TJ mm. putting herself on track for the next championship round. Damn. Boys, to shame. Congrats. Nice job. Good job. You've done it. 
I don't know. I don't get behind Yomo. I don't get Yomo. behind not. I don't get behind no Yomo. <laughs> no mo. <laughs> you know. No mo, no mo. Is this yeah. a famous clarinet player or something? <laughs> Yomo, no mo. That's it. You're thinking of Yo-Yo I think it's Ma. Cello. <laughs> I think that's a cello. Just... <laughs> Yomo, no mo. The famous clarinet player. Love it. Thinking about Domo, Domo. <laughs> Arigato, Mr. Roboto. Exactly. Uh-huh. Well, we should go mo. <laughs> <laughs> so there can be no mo show mo. Yo. Oh yes, thank you. Everybody no mo show yo. Okay. <laughs> well, TJ, Lucky thanks great. so much for joining us once again. Lovely to have thanks you as for always. Me over again. I'm putting you in the hall of shame here. We need to get Ooh, uh, so some more people. That I mean, it don't take this the wrong way, <laughs> TJ. But it's interesting yeah, it's that we only have same a, old folks. a handful of people that uh, want to do this because we have we still get yeah. hundreds of downloads, um, and none of them have felt the need to reach out. Have we done an email? Got, no. Have we put I've your got, email I've, up there? I've got several. I've got several people. It's just like schedule with, with yeah. some of them. Like here, I'll, let me read my list of people that I know have have expressed interest in coming on. And if you aren't on this list, fucking reach out. And I, you may have before, and I apologize. Yeah. You know, we do our best with this. It's all volunteer shit. So, uh, people people who want, who I know want to come on. Abby Holmes. I have a really hard time getting a hold of her. I just saw her at my uh, beer event. <laughs> uh, it's great to see her. Uh, I'm still dying to get John Mark's mom on. Bucket list shit. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Roberts, Ron Kompenstein, Melanie Stair, who we've had on before. Jefferson, we've been trying to get him on for a bit. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, Joshua Rendar, Aislin, and Woundy. Those are the people that I have on the list of to people to get on. This is, you know, we've had That's a, a bunch list. of other people on that I have on the left uh, side of this little spreadsheet here. Sure. And I'm going to recycle that at some point. But if you want to be on this list, hit us up. Give your email again, uh, Christopher. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't have Facebook, and maybe that's holding them back. Christopher.bizarre at gmail.com. Yeah, and we're, it's easier now that we're doing Discord um, mm-hmm. than it was with Skype. So, all right, on that note, let's get on out of here. Uh, and I don't know if we'll do it. We might be able to sneak in some sort of half ass show between now and, uh, <laughs> well, Comet Week. I got Comet Week and a burlesque show coming up, so I doubt it, but we'll we'll do our best. Maybe we can sneak something in. But uh, until then, Yomo, everybody. You only Yomo. move once. And how dare you think the moon is uninteresting? It would be without <laughs> Wi-Fi and alcohol and smokes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> sounds like those are... Uh, I think you just talked yourself out of it. <laughs> those are all, well, those are all... You almost you need. <laughs> all right. Night, y'all. Bye, guys. Thanks, Bye. TJ. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Night. I might run into a scarecrow, maybe a tin man, maybe a little girl named Dorothy with her little dog, and say, what the hell is the name of the fucking movie? <laughs>